Hey guys, so this is a quick walkthrough of the TriJango 1.9 blog. Um, as you see, we have content already listed out here. So this is content that we've created and we just added. Granted, it looks like a little bit redundant content, but realistically, these are actually different posts. So if we view them, we can see that the URL changes and also there's the content area, oh, an easy way to like or share it on Facebook, also an easy way to comment on Facebook. I am currently logged in on Facebook and I would be able to comment on this page. Granted, it's not live currently, but that's something that you could learn how to do in TriJango 1.8. Now, if we take a look at our search function here, it's a very simple search function, but it actually allows us to do all sorts of things. So if I search Justin, as in the author, it doesn't seem like anything happens, but it does actually narrow the results. Um, even more so if I said content, it's gonna narrow the results even more. So anything that relates to content, so in the title, in the description, it actually shows things that are related to that. And it's shareable, so it's using this Q lookup um, that we actually are able to share each and every content. So if I went to go to create a post, I would see I get this page not found error. Um, and this is only because I'm not actually logged in as the admin. So let's go ahead and log in as the admin, and it's going to be under J Mitch and it's the password for the purposes of learning is just try Django 1.9. We can log in and we see this Django admin. We can look at all the different posts we have in here. The user is associated to a specific user and it has all the necessary things in the admin itself, but we don't wanna use the admin to actually create posts. Instead, we wanna to go to post create and here we can actually create a new post. So new post item here and we can set it as a draft. We can change the publishing date to whatever you'd like based off of the year, month, and day. And we create this post. This is now saying that it's a draft post. It gives us a little message saying um, that it's been successfully created. If I try to go to this post in a incognito window that is um, not logged in, it will give me a 404 not found. That's because it's still in draft mode. So if I wanted to change it from draft mode, and change it to be published and put it in the past as in it's already been published, I can go ahead and do that again. And now I can actually see that post. And of course here we can also upload an image. So if we just uploaded a try Django image, we can go ahead and hit create post. And this is a now allowing me to actually see the post image itself. So I go back in here and here we go. We have that new um, actual post there and it's working. So there's a lot of things that we actually go over as far as building this. Of course, a walkthrough can show you everything that we actually do when we go through building walk, uh, this completely. But uh, the main part here is we actually do implement Bootstrap. Bootstrap is a front end framework. So get bootstrap.com. We actually do implement this. Um, on, even though it's a small scale, we actually do implement it so you can have better looking um, posts and blog itself. Um, and then the other thing is if you need reference code, that is the code that you're gonna be writing here, it's gonna be on our GitHub. So github.com slash coding for entrepreneurs and looking in the repositories, you're gonna look for try Django 1.9 and this is all of the code here. So this is rather important actually, is if you ever get stuck building any part of this site, you would come in here and just click on the video itself. So the first video that has lecture code is versions and install. But let's say for instance, you're on lecture 14 Django templates. So at the very end of lecture 14, we actually send this code up here and it will, uh, looks like we have a little issue, but we will actually send this code up here and you'll be able to click on each individual piece and actually see the code that's related to that actual lecture. So um, that's it for the walkthrough and a little bit about GitHub. Granted, this seems very simple and that's because once we actually finish it, you'll see how easy it was actually to build it and how simple it really is to build something like this. So from here, what we would do is actually add things onto our project to make it even more dynamic. So if you have any questions on the walkthrough or you want to see something built in the future on top of this post, this is the final product. So this is where you would kind of want to say uh, what you want to be built in the future. Thanks so much for watching. And if you're ready to get started, let's jump right in.